So hi, I'm Jim Olgensky from Enterprise DB. I'm Chief Architect here. I wanted to talk a little bit today about Hibernate and how you scale a Postgres application with Hibernate. Hibernate's a popular object relational mapping tool used in the Java environment, but it's something that's not that common in a Postgres world. And having the two work together takes a little bit of work, work in order to get everything to tie together nicely. A basic Hibernate application with Postgres works very easily and very quickly, but when you want to scale it to enterprise heights, you're really going to have to make some changes to the default settings of, of Hibernate and Postgres in order to get everything to work together nicely. What I wanted to talk today about is just a couple of the high points of how to scale that. Probably the biggest thing that you're going to see when you're scaling a Hibernate application with Postgres is how Hibernate handles updates. When you do an update with Hibernate, by default, it's going to send to the backend database. You're going to update every single column in that particular table. In Postgres, that could become a big problem as you scale and as you do many, many updates inside a particular table. This is because of how Postgres handles multi-version concurrency control for handling history of, of tables and being able to manage who sees what version of a row going forward. In that particular case, whenever you do an update to a particular column, you're not going to be able to leverage some of the new features in Postgres A3 using HOT of being able to do essentially updates in the same block. And you're going to end up with a lot of table bloat and index bloat as you start growing. Uh, this leads to a lot of maintenance overhead and a lot of extra work you're going to have to add to the database administrator. That da database administrator is going to just say, okay, we're going to vacuum more and stop doing that. And they're going to just going to say, what is this Hibernate thing? The, why is it sending all those di different columns? Because Postgres people aren't familiar with something like Hibernate. It's something that is a little foreign to a Postgres database developer or a Postgres database administrator. It, even though it gives a lot of advantages to a Java developer, it's something that a, a Postgres developer is going to have to learn to work with because of all those advantages to the business side of a, a Java application. So, so the first thing that you want to do is turn off that native, the default ability of Hibernate in order to send all the different columns to the backend database. And that's simply by turning off dynamic updates. There's a simple annotation in order to shut that off. That is going to make things work a lot smoother with Postgres, and the application is going to scale a lot better. The second thing is as your applications get larger and larger, and your tables start getting larger and larger, you're going to start wanting to partition your tables. So as you start adding millions or even billions of rows, you're going to want to, the database administrator is going to want to partition that table, which is exactly how you want to be able to handle large tables. But Hibernate isn't going to be able to handle, handle that just out of the box. You're going to have to change, again, change some of the default settings of Hibernate in order to be able to do that. That's due to the fact of how Postgres handles partition tables. When you're handling, when you're doing a partition table, Postgres uses inherited tables, so, and, and so you're going to have child tables out to the master, and you're, you're going to utilize rules or triggers in order to move the rows out to the specific table partition. Works great in, in a partition sense, but Hibernate's default settings checks the number of rows coming back, and you're never actually going to be set, putting any rows into that base table. So what, what gets back is a row count of zero, and Hibernate's going to throw an error on that. So you're going to have to override Hibernate's default settings for, for, up to, uh, for inserts in order to be able to handle a partition table. Something very simple to do, and again, through a simple annotation, but it, by default, if a Postgres administrator is going to partition a table, you're going to have to change your Hibernate application. And, and lastly, I wanted to talk about connection pooling. Connection pooling is something that's critical within Postgres. Postgres is process-based and not thread-based, so every time you create a new database connection, it's fairly heavy, so if you have a lot of concurrent users going, and they're going to be disconnecting and connecting from the database very rapidly, it's going to put a lot of burden on the back-end database, so you're going to want a connection pool layer. So a, a Postgres administrator would probably want to utilize something like PG Bouncer or PG Pool in order to put a layer in there for the connection pool and, and let, the, let the Java application use that. But really, a better way is utilizing JBosses or Hibernate's built-in connection pool layers like C3PO or others in order to be able to do that. Because if you're using a layer like PG Bouncer or PG Pool, you're going to have to move the data twice, adding additional overhead to that instead of just natively letting the application server handle that. So Postgres works great together with Hibernate, but you have to remember a couple key points as you're scaling that out 
uh, as you start adding more and more data and more and more concurrent users out to your application. I hope you found all this informative. Thank you for watching.